Hello friends, it's me Sonia. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to continue as promised with my message regarding the Shriners and its connection with Islam. Primarily this is going to be a presentation to show you the other side of Freemasonry. Um, the reason being often we hear mostly about the Freemasonic um, sort of one world control over the nations of this world and um, it's a very mysterious organization very secretive but this other element that no one seems to talk about when I research I don't find much about it especially on YouTube you do find my older video which is um, quite surprising actually I've done this subject matter before and it's on my channel but today I'm going to show you on screen because when I did that first message which was several months ago now I wasn't able to use my camera <clears throat> the way I'm using it right now so hopefully this will explain what the Shriners organization is and um, why we should be concerned about it to be honest I think it's very evil as mysterious as it is shrouded in secrecy there are some things that we can know about this organization and thankfully it is available online so I'm going to show this stuff to you today and again be prepared it's going to be probably quite a lengthy message I don't know because I'm as I'm talking right now I don't know how long this presentation will continue but can I remind you friends those of you who are Christians to please be very prayerful and to remember to cover yourself with the armor of God as mentioned in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 because we're talking about very evil, very dark, sinister things here today and um, I go forward with this message knowing that the grace of God is with me and I can continue to speak about these very dark and very uncomfortable things um, I have the strength of the Lord and I have his courage and his boldness that he has given me. His grace is sufficient. Anyway, without further ado, so here we go, you guys. I've got probably two video clips I'm going to show you today. There could have been a lot more, but I'm trying to show you more content that is readable on screen. Because, of course, I'm here talking as well as expressing to you what this Shriners is and why is it connected to Saudi Arabia and Mecca okay so let me turn the screen over there's going to be again quite a lot of stuff I'm going to be talking to you about today you guys so be prepared it's quite detailed I think anyway um, it took me a while to get my head around this subject matter is incredibly complicated and very murky I'm going to do my best and show you what I know and I'll leave the rest up to you for you to make your own conclusions. So now I've got an image here in front of you that some of you might already be familiar with. You may have seen this, it floats around on the internet. Probably other people have done videos regarding this, especially the Truther channels. But what you'll find often within the Truther channels is this anti-Jewish rhetoric right they blame the Zionists for all the control over the world but this other aspect of the Freemasonic secret society the Shriners they don't even go anywhere near talking about that and which is why I'm going to talk about that today because I think this aspect of the Freemasonic um, secret society is more sinister more dark and much much more evil and I'm going to show you why right so for a start we've got this structure structure of freemasonry i'm going to try to zoom in the best i can thankfully it gives me the options to zoom in so here you go this is from their own sources and this is how they describe the structure or their pyramid <clears throat> let me zoom back out to show you that one more time so you can see here now these are all the various steps or the different well I guess the levels of their order and even here on the left you can see these various different um, grades levels and they also have titles now this is I'm gonna have to zoom in and up here of course you've got the top up here but if you pay attention here what do we have here 
let's zoom in so if I can put the thing there it says the word <laughs> that's as far as I can go shrine shrine what shrine are we talking about the shrine we're talking about here is the one in Mecca yep the one in Mecca Saudi Arabia and you see the emblem here daughters of the Nile it has the crescent the sword a crescent and the sword this here is the logo or the emblem for the Shriners it's related to Muhammad Gaba Mecca Islam okay often we will see people talk about these guys here order of the Knights Templars now I'm gonna come to this in a moment as I progress in this video again you guys <clears throat> please keep me in prayer as I discuss these messages it is very incredibly uncomfortable because we're talking about some really dark sinister things within this Masonic secret society thing and um, I'm gonna try my best anyway let's uh, zoom over cross to the left now I want us to focus on the wording here all right let me show you I'm right at the top and right at the beginning so American Freemasonry resembles two sets of stairs that begin and end together as this chart of Masonic structure shows a Mason's first step is to become an entered apprentice he climbs to the third step where most Masons stay if he wants to go on in Masonic hierarchy he enters either the Scottish or York rites Many authorities say <clears throat> the Scottish Rite was begun by Scots emigres in France. The York Rite is named after York, England, where by legend the first Masonic body was organised. Okay, so so on. <clears throat> Let me take your attention over to this side here. On the right. Because I'm going to be going through a lot of text today, so I'm going to try to limit my reading as much as possible but again because you're watching this you can always pause the screen and take notes if you want to even screenshots a mason in york right advances 10 degrees known by name and not by degree number on chart are figures he meets at each degree or the degree symbol figures are temple workman past master virtual Israel tribesman, high priest of Jews, King Hiram or Hiram of Tyre. I'm going to talk about that. I've done some research on this to find out what on earth they're talking about here. So take note, I'm going to focus on this here, the King Hiram of Tyre. Knight of Malta, Knight Templar, another one I'm going to focus on today. Equal in prestige to the 33 degree in Scottish right of course now if you're listening to this stuff for the first time none of it makes absolutely any sense it doesn't still to me I'm just showing you what they believe and what they are describing their organization to be let's continue under the arch are organizations allied they're allied to Freemasonry Master Masons are eligible for Grotto and Tor Cedars of Lebanon. Girls with a Mason in the family can join Jobs Daughters or Rainbow Girls Women. The Eastern Star Boys, Dit Mole. Only 32nd degree Masons. Focus, you guys. I know it can get really dreary already reading all these degrees and stuff. But I'm showing you the connection between the Shriners and Islam, Muhammad, Mecca, Kaaba, and why that is really important for Bible prophecy. Only 32 degree Masons, these are the ones that are really high up the top, okay? Only 32 Masons or Knights Templar can join the Shrine. Shriner's wife can be a daughter of the Nile, which I just showed you under the arch, that imagery. <clears throat> Most important of many Masonic symbols are the open Bible with square and compass on it, Solomon's Temple, and the G with the all-seeing eye inside, upper right. <clears throat> In the US, the G stands for God. 
Let's take a cross here. What was he talking about there? That only 32nd degrees can join the shrine. He's talking about these here that I just showed you. Okay, in the middle here. Note the crescent, the sword, the star. This figure right there in the middle. It's not clear because it's as far as I can zoom. But it's a pharaoh, image of a pharaoh. I'll go into that. Um, time permitting I will go into that and I'll explain to you what the symbols mean but I'm also going to show you what they say about their organization remember their version that is readily available online will be kind of watered down because remember it's all about secrets they keep a lot of secrets from us and um, you'll only know them if you're in this organization there's some more text. I'm just showing you the imagery as best as I can. Did I read all the text? I did. I read all the text. Okay. Now, another image. I got several of these images, friends. I know some of you who are familiar with um, the information regarding the Freemasons have seen some of this. You've seen it. You've seen it before. If you notice at the top... What do we have here? This right dead center in the middle. Can I zoom in? Ah, oh, it's as far as I can zoom in. What's the symbol that we have here? This right here is the Shriners. Remember the Shriners are connected to Mecca, Gaba, Islam. Over there on the left also is the same symbol and on the right I believe it's the female version the Eastern star okay let me see if I can zoom back out so hopefully you're gonna be seeing this in a different light today regarding the Freemasons here's a video clip I've got I'm gonna play it now to get it out the way with it's 37 seconds and it was a report a brief interview clip that was aired on CNN and the title is 33rd degree Mason American president study the Quran Islam in secret you're gonna find out friends that all this talk about the Zionist this and the Zionist that is in fact a lot of it is to do with the Islamic <coughs> control okay hold on a moment you're right. All Muslims respect the Bible, but he should have the opportunity. Now, your ignorance, Mr. Prater, Islam has contributed a lot to America. In the middle of the Supreme Court is, in the rotunda, is a statue or bust of the Prophet Muhammad, showing the respect that American law and jurisprudence has for the revealer of the Quran. Many of American presidents are Masons and Shriners. Many of American presidents are Masons and shriners okay who got to the 33rd degree and studied the quran in secret so when they reached the 33rd did he say 33rd or 32nd degree when they reached that level they study the quran and have the star and the crescent on their fez the star and the crescent on their fez the fez i will show you what that is so islam is at the basis of western and american civilization i want to ask you a question you're right. uh, oh, most <laughs> so that video goes back on repeat now <clears throat> what is he talking about the fez well first start this is from their own website the Shriners International and this is how they word it regarding their symbol that is the emblem can you see there how antichrist is that you guys so they're worshipping this the crescent and the star again and they've got the sword there which represents the um i believe is this uh conquest the islamic conquest with a lot of bloodshed what can be so nice and light-hearted about that you guys this is what they say in their own words because of course they're an organization and they also recruit people and they encourage people to join and become a member, a Shriner. Now, they say about this, the emblem on the front of the Fez 
the crescent and the scimitar is an important part of the fraternity's theme and is representative of the characteristics embodied by the Shriners. The scimitar stands for the backbone of the fraternity, its members, nonsense. The two claws are for the Shriners fraternity and its philanthropy. The Sphinx stands for the governing body of the Shriners. The five-pointed star represents the thousands of children helped by the philanthropy each year. This is all nonsense. The emblem also bears the phrase Rebe et Furo, which means strength and fury. Now, take a good look at this, you guys. Now, that emblem there has been written to mean the star and the crescent is the moon idol of Islam. The sword, again, is representative of the Islamic conquest, which by there were much, there was a lot of bloodshed that took place. And that guy, the Pharaoh, the Sphinx, is actually also called the father of terror. Now, let me read to you where that word fez comes from. Can you see that word I'm highlighting there, you guys? Let's see. Fez. It's a city in Morocco, but what happened there? Let's fucking turn that back there again. This is an article written on the Berean call. I'll show you. The Berean call. Reputable, written in 2003 by Dave Hunt. You may be familiar with his writings. Now, let me go back down to where I was. I'd, I'd like to read the whole thing. But it's a lot. Now, let me bring you back down to where I was regarding the fez. Here you go. I'll make it a little larger because I would like you to read for yourself what's written here okay let me see how far up do I read from I'll start from here okay friends thank you for bearing with me in Spain to which Muslims point as an example of their tolerance the garrison of Moez was slaughtered in 920 Pamplona was put to the sword in 923, then Cordova, Zaragoza and Merida, with all adult males killed and women and children enslaved. The Jews of Granada were butchered in 1066, 34 years after 6,000 Jews had been slaughtered in Fez in Morocco. Now, the legend has it, the reason why these Shriners wear the red fez, the hat, it's called the fez, is because of this historic background to it. The scimitar above the, the emblem, the logo, is connected to this, what happened here in history. In 1146, Islamic Fez was put to the sword by rival Muslims, the Alamahads, who conquered much of North Africa after the annihilating of the Almoravides, another Muslim faction, with about 100,000 massacred, another 120,000 killed in Marrakesh and similar slaughters elsewhere, all gestures of peace. The 400-year rule of the Ottoman Turks saw forced kidnappings of young boys into Islam and slavery, causing parents to mutilate children to make them undesirable. Oh, under the Ottomans, being Greek, Armenian, Serb or any other non-Muslim was to live in daily fear of murder, rape, torture, genocide. To this day, Serbs and Bulgarians loathe Turks and Bosnians. Right. What happens when you become a Shriner? Well, you have to take an oath. In fact, I have a whole presentation here by somebody who uh, had this uploaded online. I think I might show that to you. <coughs> but if you could read what it says here on this link, I saw the Light Ministries. 
candidates into the Shriners are greeted by a high, high priest who says, by the existence of Allah and the creed of Muhammad, by the legendary sanctity of our tabernacle at Mecca, we greet you. The inductees then swear on the Bible and the Quran in the name of Muhammad. and invoke masonry's usual gruesome penalties upon themselves. And as you can see, it's in the quote. I don't really want to read that, but I've got the grace of God in my life. I can read that without fear. And this is the oath that they have to confess. This is just an excerpt. I have a presentation that shows the whole thing. So they know, they knowingly enter into various ceremonies so they can be accepted in this wicked brotherhood. So it says, I do hereby upon this Bible and on the mysterious legend of the Quran, look at the abomination, the, the blasphemous act right there and its dedication to the Mohammedan faith, promise and swear and vow that I will never reveal any secret part, it's all about secrets, right? Or portion whatsoever of the ceremonies. Now, when you enter into the Freemasonic side, they have the same stuff. They've got to make these oaths. They've got to promise and solemn to secrecy and what have you. But this one, because it's the Shriners, they invoke Allah as their God. <clears throat> and now upon this sacred book, by the sincerity of a Muslim's oath, I here register this irrevocable vow in willful violation whereof I may incur the, fearfully, the fearful penalty, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to read all of that. And may Allah, the God of Arab, Muslim and Muhammadan, the God of our fathers... The God of our fathers, support me to the intern, entire fulfillment of the same. Amen, amen, amen. So this, my friends, is what the highest ranking or the highest level Masons are confessing. Remember, you've got to be a 32 degree Mason to enter into the shrine, to be a Shriner. Now, it continues with this document. I'll give you this link in the description. How far back does this go? 1894. <clears throat> the order of the nobles of the mystic shrine was instituted by the Mohammedan Caliph Ali, whose name be cursed, the cousin German and son-in-law of the Prophet Muhammad in the year of the Hijra, AD 644. So this document is saying, no, this goes way back further. It's older than the 1800s that has been sort of alleged and announced on the Shriners website. Now, having said that, again, I've got tons of information here, you guys. I have this Bible Hub verse regarding the objects of the sun, moon and stars and how the Lord our God, the Holy One of Israel, forbade the worship of the heavenly host. And the heavenly host worship is connected to Baal worship. In all, <clears throat> Freemasons, Shriners are Baal worshippers. Again, they exhibit these symbols in their imagery. Now I'm going to show you some more. Again, in that image there, you can see what's, what's going on here. You get these honorary knighthoods up here. But right at the top, right at the very top of that compass, the infamous Freemasonic compass, this thing, what do you have right on this pinnacle? What is that right there? Can we zoom in? I want to zoom in and I want to show, show this to you guys. That... <clears throat> 
You got these secret societies, yeah, sure. <clears throat> you won't let me do that. Okay, it's taking me off the page because I zoomed in so quickly. You have people who are swearing allegiance to Muhammad, <clears throat> to Allah, in regards to the shrine in Mecca. And that's what's at the heart of it. They will say that Freemasonic order was around a lot longer and that element of the Freemasons is connected to the temple, Solomon's temple. And what do we have here? Because Islam came after Solomon's temple period is Mecca, Muhammad, Gaba. So now this organization affiliated now with the Freemasons of course have their symbol clearly there for all those who have eyes to see can see it again i can't make you see these things friends <clears throat> you just got to pray continually another image again we've got the shriners right at the top at the pinnacle can you see that friends <sighs> please don't zoom me out oh it's just not having it is it okay right there I found it on several several different um, emblems okay here's another one and um, what was that scripture you guys regarding the for forbidding commandment that God said not to do and then people are doing it crescent moon you got this um, the star some sort of illumination thing going on there and you got the Sun the same astral triad deities there again. So this being is considered to them the illuminated one, right? Which is what is descriptive of the crescent moon god. The Shriners in Islam has been around a long time. The ancient Arabic order of the nobles of the mystic shrine. Remember, this is in relation to the shrine in Mecca, Gaba where the Freemasons have the Temple, Solomon's Temple connection. <clears throat> and I've been thinking about this as I was recording and just preparing for recording. I was thinking, it's like as though both elements within this Masonic pyramid thing, both elements are working towards this sinister sort of <clears throat> preparation for antichrist it, it does seem like that to me whereas you've got the masons focusing on the temple where is the temple today well there isn't one it's being built right they're in preparation for the third temple but what is in its place at this moment at this moment the holy temple mount is now dominated by <clears throat> emblems of the Islamic faith so to me it seems as though both sides of the same coin are working towards the um, establishment of the Antichrist whereby they allow certain things within the world to work towards that end and that that sadly disappoints me because many US presidents have been and there are still many politicians right now who are Shriners. That disappoints me greatly and I'm very sad to find out about that. Okay. Um, Baphomet. Another connection to do with Freemasons, right? Now you may have come across this imagery before. Baphomet. Now Something about Baphomet I would like you to pay attention to that you may not have seen before. This particular image, um, absolute hideous image, but if you can notice the crescent moon there and the crescent moon below it as well. The darkness and light, the up and down, the chaos regarding this, but also the androgynous, being the male female androgyny thing going on here it's a beast right it's a beast 
However, this depiction, this artistic depiction was fairly recent. It hasn't been around for centuries and centuries and but it's become popularized right now. But did you know that Baphomet here is actually connected to the Knights Templars? Now, I pray that this presentation so far, I'm not giving you a lot of information in one hit, but I have known this for a while, but I was unable to bring it up on screen, but now I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show you the connection between them and the Knights Templars, you guys. One moment, let me make sure I can have this out. This is a two minute clip and it's from the Smithsonian channel. So it's not a conspiracy channel, it's um, an historic Smithsonian channel. All right, so I'm going to show you some wording regarding this as well. Listen. During the Templar trials, members of the order described how initiates were required to perform bizarre sexual rites, bestowing obscene kisses on the bodies of senior members. They confessed to spitting and trampling on the cross and denying the divinity of Jesus. The accusations have been leveled at the Templars are extremely lured and I've always attracted, for that reason, a great deal of attention. But they are there in black and white in the trial depositions, so we have to address them and assess them. But most shocking of all, was the testimony that the Templars worshipped a sinister bearded head. In the trials, the head was described in various different ways. Sometimes they said it had two heads. Sometimes brothers described it as having four feet. Some said it was made of silver. Some said it was made of gold. It was rumored to be the preserved head of the first Templar Grand Master, Hugh de Payen. It was also described as a two-faced skull or the head of an animal. Some mentioned a weird idol known as Baphomet. It's possible the word Baphomet was a corrupted pronunciation of Mohammed. If so... Baphomet is possible, they say. It was a corruption of the word Mahomet because that's how his name was pronounced in that time, in that era, in that region. I'm showing you this because there's a connection between the Knights Templars who are Shriners. Remember, Shriners, every Shriner is a Mason, but not every Mason is a Shriner. The Shriners are at the top, all right? So what happened during the Crusades, we don't know, we weren't there. All we can do is base our judgment upon evidence and scrutinizing historical writings and then sort of make an intelligent judgment and assessment if you like but this has this connection between Baphomet and Mahomet is also expressed in dictionary.com yes the official website of dictionary.com and I'll show you that in a moment let me continue some have suggested this is evidence that the Templars were secret converts to Islam. In the 12th century, the Muslim culture, the Muslim civilization was very ahead of the Western European uh, civilization. When the Knights Templar went to the Holy Lands, they were uh, confronted with a culture that was very superior to their own. So some influences began to settle in the general ideology of the Templars. Okay, that was a short clip. And I thought that was really important for me to show it to you so you can see it and you can hear it, not just me talking about it, because there'll be people out there, and, I've, and, and this has happened to me before, well, I've made this statement, yes, Baphomet was connected to Mahomet, and there is, there is this evidence out there. There are historians, people who study this stuff, say it themselves. But what they will say is that, well, we, we, we have to go by what we know. And that is what they know. All right, they weren't there. They weren't taking photographs. They weren't making any posts on social media. But what they can go by is what was historically recorded. 
Now, the connection between Baphomet and Mahomet is huge, you guys, because what is that telling us? We've been told, let me see if I can find the dictionary.com. <laughs> Dictionary.com. We've been told, oh, Baphomet, Illuminati, Freemasons. Yeah, absolutely. But you never hear the connection between Islam and Baphomet. Have you? Have you ever come across that connection? Bear with me, friends. I'm, I have so many tabs open here. Right, can you see at the top, if I can just move my screen somewhat. I'm sorry about that. I'm on the website. Uh dictionary.com okay what does it say <sighs> where does Baphomet come from <clears throat> Baphomet has reportedly been in use since at least the 1090s you see it hasn't been around a long long time when it appeared in an early crusaders letter those crusaders were the knights templars the name itself although certainly not its modern image may have been connected with Islam. They say it may have been. As chroniclers referred to mosques as Bafumarias. Something Baphomet is a corruption of Mahomet, an alternate spelling of Muhammad, although many other cryptic origin theories have been provided. Regardless of his specific origins, Baphomet got, got much more attention after the Knights Templar, a medieval Catholic military order, were interrogated under the Inquisition. Under torture, <clears throat> some admitted to worshipping a pagan idol named Baphomet. <clears throat> this figure didn't have a consistent appearance or nature, and not all Templars admitted to worshipping it. It's unclear whether Baphomet actually had anything to do with the Templars' activities, whether it was an accusation the church created to lend more weight to the other charges of heresy, or whether the admissions were simply tortured out of them. <clears throat> but it does say it's unclear. It's unclear. But this is out there, you guys. It's out there. Now, again, you be the judge. You can make up your own conclusions. Now, I came across this. And I'm going to have to remember to put this in the description. Because I think this is incredibly valuable. This gentleman who is a former Freemason. He went and put all this slideshow together. And it's out there. It's on the public format right here on slideshare.net. But I will put this in the description so you can go through it yourself there are 50 slides in this but I think I need to show you something really important because we want to know what what is it about the Shriners and this connection with Islam now all right so he's got some images of what the Shriners, their documentation, their historical, I don't know, their records, their literature. Can you notice again what is at the very top? Now we're talking about Freemasons, the Zionist Freemasons, all right? But how comes we have an Islamic connection to the Shriners right there at the top? There's the scimitar, the bloody scimitar, the bloody meaning blood drenched, <coughs> crescent, moon and the star and that little guy in the center the pharaoh what an abomination <clears throat> let's go to the next one so ancient arabic nobles of the mystic shrine <clears throat> and this is all the imagery that is associated with it to become a Shriner, one used to have to pick one of the rights to wear the Fez. The Fez, up uh, this thing here, you'll see many of them. There's images of uh, US presidents as well. 
celebrities in Hollywood, many of them, you guys. Just Google it. I do have it on the screen here. I'll come to that in a moment, otherwise I'll be hopping all over the place. You will see photographs, black and white pictures with many famous people who wore these fez hats. They were Shriners, you guys. I see this whole movement working towards and favouring Saudi Arabia and Mecca, the Gaba. There are people who are of the opinion that Israel, United States America and Saudi Arabia together are what you call the Zionist. Um, it's like together they are Zionists because they're working towards the goal of resetting the temple, having it rebuilt so their fake antichrist messiah can come in. But what they forget to mention is this Shriners aspect. Now you listened to that clip from the Smithsonian's. You've listened to that clip from the CNN report of that guy talking about many US presidents passing the 32nd degree have taken oaths on the Quran and they study Islamic texts. So we know that this, this infiltration of Islam in the West has been happening for a long, long time, you guys. It's nothing new. But the weird thing is we never hear about it. No one talks about it. You just don't hear about it. It's hardly anything on the internet. Anyway, let's continue. Ancient Arabic Order Nobles Mystic Shrine. All right. On September 26, 1872, these two men met with 11 others in New York's Masonic Hall, 114 East 13th Street, for the purpose of formally organizing the Ancient Order of the Nobles of the Mystic Shrine for North America. Together, they became charter members of the New York Temple named Mecca. The Arabic Shrine was born in America so they knew back then what they were doing and anyway let's go on because I'm going to show you what it is that they actually do I'll leave this here for you to consider because there are other sources out there who tell you Shriners are harmless, right? They're called jesters or clowns. They just like to have fun. They're philanthropists. They have these hospitals to help children in need. and Well, that is one side to them, of course, the charitable side. <clears throat> but then there's this other side that you and I, my dear friends, are never going to know what really goes on behind closed doors, closed curtains because they're sworn to secrecy. Why are they sworn to secrecy? What is the secret? What is it exactly? I don't think we're ever gonna know, and I thank God we don't know. <sighs> Masonry teaches a practice of all good morals, leaving the interpretation of right and wrong to the individual conscience, of course. Let man be their own God, right? I'm going to skip this because, again, there's 50 screens here. <sighs> Being created by God in the flesh make us his creation, not his children. One must be born of the spirit in order to be a child of God. Christian doctrine. All right. So he's talking about. So this guy who put this together is an ex-Mason. Uh, I want to show you. Again, I will put this link in the description so you can go through it yourself. Now, the one that I want to show you is regarding the um, the oaths, the thing, the vows that they take in order to enter this thing. And you wouldn't believe your eyes when I show it to you. You wouldn't believe this, you guys. Anyway, Prince or Recognition. This is sad, isn't it, in America? This is sad. 41 U.S. Grand Lodges, including Alaska, Hawaii, and D.C. 80% have voted in favor of Prince or Masonry recognition. This is back in 2008. Not good. Very bad. Um, all right. So he's put down some photocopies or let's say he has screened some of these documents and I'm going to go through them. Which bit can I show? Okay, now, listen. Focus on this. 
if, if I can zoom in, I can't zoom in, you guys. I'm so sorry. Within our temple will be found the common ground upon which upright men may meet in harmony and frank good fellowship without fear of discussion of sectarian, political or personal differences. In harmony with our oriental rites, we designate the deity as Allah. But in so doing, we speak not in the narrow meaning of the Muhammadan, but in reverent adoration of the supreme architect of the universe, in whom we live and move and have our being. They're, they're associating Allah, knowing that he's related to the Muhammadan religion, as God, the supreme architect of the universe. With us, you need to apprehend no actions or words of such character as to violate your accepted standards of generosity, hospitality and friendly courtesy. We shall ask of you only that which you may confidently expect to have freely extended to you by each and every noble of the mystic shrine. Here the cares, anxieties, vexations and struggles of our daily life are laid aside and temporarily forgotten while we enjoy the beneficial relaxation of eternal friendship and harmless amusement in which for the time being you may be called upon to take an active and prominent part but with the full assurance that you will not be subjected to anything even bordering upon vulgarity or indecency. Are you kidding me? The underlying principles of our order are pleasure without intemperance, hospitality without rudeness, jollity without coarseness. Now that you have been elected to be numbered with the nobility, I must admonish you that your future actions, the next step that they're going to take, must be such as will cast no stigma or stain upon the order with which you seek to become associated. You will be expected to assist in upholding the reputation and character of the mystic shrine in Mecca, Gaba, Arabia, in the world without as well as within the portals of our temple. Right. This is not clear at all. I don't know if you can make it out on the screen. Let me do, um, let me read as much as I can. Uh, do I need to read that section? Let me see. <clears throat> it's talking about the, the apron, right? And the hat, the, symboli the symbolism. You were presented with a lambskin a white leather apron because the lamb in all ages has been deemed as an emblem of innocence. The lambskin is therefore to remind you of that purity of life, rectitude of conduct, which is so essentially necessary to your gaining admission to that celestial lodge above where the, script, the supreme architect of the universe presides. When they are given this information, now the person on the other hand receiving this information, it, in his full awareness, knows what he's entering into. This to them is their concept of salvation. The lambskin is therefore to remind you of that purity of life. You see how they are replacing the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, his blood that was shed on the cross, his sin, you could say his lambskin that covered and taken away our sins. They have put a replacement there. They've substituted it. The lambskin is therefore to remind you of that purity of life and rectitude of conduct which is so essentially necessary to your gaining admission to that celestial lodge above where the supreme architect of the universe presides. And who did they consider to be the supreme architect of the universe? Allah. I wish I could zoom in, but it won't let me zoom in, you guys. <sighs> no, it doesn't. All right, I'm going to read it to you. Pertinent. If you are still willing to assume the vowel, so if you're still after knowing all of that, if you want to continue, right, this is what they're saying. Say I, pronounce your name in full and repeat after me. Do now call upon Allah, 
and these nobles to witness that I willingly and sincerely assume the vow of a noble of the mystic shrine. You see what I'm saying? They willingly, sincerely assume the vow, knowing that it's Allah who they are calling upon. You know, we hear people talking about, oh, you know, United States of America was founded on godly Christian principles. And then you'll have the other crowd in in this debate say, oh, no, our, our nation wasn't founded on Christian values. It was founded on Zionist Freemasonic values. But you'll never hear them tell you about the Shriners. So is this what is behind the Muslim Brotherhood claim care organization claim by saying that you know islam muslims were very much a part of the founding of this nation is this what they really mean is this what's behind it i have a strong suspicion that many of these in fact all of the every leading government has to have come in close sort of they must have been confronted with joining these fraternity groups because you've got to join the club to make any impact have any impact any influence in this arena you you have to be a part of this club you guys so they've got to pick and choose which side they want to take there's two sides to the same coin that's what i'm saying <clears throat> absolutely annoyed i'm so annoyed and very disgusted as i discover this stuff and i'm sharing it with you and i pray you will join me in this disgust and ask the Lord for mercy. I pray for mercy for this nation. I don't pray for judgment. I pray for mercy. May the Lord have mercy. That's all I can say. Right, the vow continues. So now this guy accepting and very much willing, sincerely assuming the vow, will say, I will keep in my heart all the secrets of the mystic shrine. I will follow its lead in all good works. I will abide by its rules and regulations. I will not oppose its purposes. Allah is my witness. I take refuge in him. I'm sorry. You see, in the beginning, they will tell you that, oh, we welcome all faiths, you know. If you want to put your hand on the book of the Bible, then that's fine. If you want to put your hand on the Talmud or the Old Testament, that's fine. You can call on Jesus. That's fine. Where is Jesus in all of this? Where is he? And now upon this sacred book, we'll take a guess. What book do you think it is? I register my solemn vow binding myself here to and also to the obligations of the prerequisite to this membership as long as my life shall last. Now, I shall not repeat the, the following words because they incur upon themselves a curse. If you can see it for yourself, then you can see it. And may Allah, the God of Arab and Muhammadan, the God of our fathers, support me in the entire fulfillment of the same disgusting abominable this whole thing is absolutely shocking to me what's written here now this is a part of the shriners this is what they believe of course now you'll have the jesters the clowns the guys who like to party the guys who like to apparently help children in these hospitals they will tell you another thing it's possible that these guys are right at the bottom they're none the wiser but to be honest, I highly doubt it, all right? This is all about deceiving the masses. Just the whole thing is shrouded in mystery for a reason, for a reason. And if you consider the, the high-ranking officials that are in this movement, this organization, this secret society, it has to make you wonder how they are governing the affairs of our world today, all right? Who's doing what and for who's... Whose purposes? Whose side are they really on, you guys? Inside their circle is the word Allah, which in the mystic shrine is used in the generic sense only to represent the supreme architect. Then why couldn't we just say God? Why can't you just say Jesus? Why specifically Allah? Because Muslims will tell you when you confess the Islamic creed, the Shahada, when you say La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, you're saying there's no God but Allah 
and Muhammad is his messenger. You're not saying there is no God but God. You can't be a Muslim if you say that. You have to say Allah. So they have chosen knowingly, full well, why they picked that name. <clears throat> oh, I'm so angry, you guys. You'll have to bear with me. The more I read this, the more I'm losing my nut, I'm telling you. Every noble of the shrine is entitled to wear this jewel. Oh, whatever. Anyway, right. Again, you might have seen this. I've seen this before when I was in the deliverance ministry. We were taught about about this stuff to be aware of it, that they are, there are these demonic entities out there, personalities, right, without bodies, demons. And so I was aware of this before, but I'm showing it to you, friends, so you are now aware and you can become wiser. So they're great architect of the universe, a generic deity, right? So they're saying that Baal is up there, Allah, Ra, Buddha, Jehovah, Lucifer, Krishna, Vishnu. Oh, and they put Jesus Christ there, look. Do you think God is happy about this secret society, you guys? Do you think he's displeasing him? Absolutely not. This is an abomination. Absolute abomination. Oh, there are several things going off in my mind right now that I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about the pedophile ring issue, right? The pedo gate, pizza gate, and um, Saudi Arabia connection. Eventually, I will make a video on that, but it's so detailed and so lengthy, it's going to take a while for me to put that together because there's not a lot of information available. Of course it wouldn't be. They would be very careful to keep that stuff hidden and secret. It goes on, it goes on, and they show you here <clears throat> what the actual actual temple looks like inside. And you can see here, we'll get my pen, you got the emblem there, the shrine emblem. This time you've got two scimitars there, two swords to emulate a crescent moon. And it says, I don't know if you can see, I can see it, it says Quran and Bible there. Why bring the Bible into all of this, you perverted bunch of devils? <clears throat> On altar of obligation, the Bible and the Quran and the Veda, a holy stone of black marble and two cross scimitars, an altar of incense, a burning incense of myrrh, and a layer of water, and a lava or layer of water in the south, each halfway between the east and the altar of obligation. Ugh. Masonic doctrine. He's defending the Bible here in his presentation. <clears throat> mystic Shrine Ceremonial. My friends or nobles of the Mystic Shrine, the order with which you have become united, this is their doctrine, this is their literature. This is very old stuff, you can tell by the print. The order with which you have become united was founded by Muhammad and has as its background the trackless desert of Arabia and the fearless, devoted and barbaric Arab. Arabic history and tradition tell us that after the fall and separation of Adam and Eve, they were united near the place now known as Mecca. They're telling you the reason why they focus on this region. Adam prayed for a shrine where he might worship. This is all Islamic nonsense. This, this belief system. Adam prayed for a shrine where he might worship. In due time, a tabernacle of clouds was given to him. After the death of Adam, the tabernacle was redrawn and his son Seth erected a temple of stone in that place. Later, Ishmael, with his father Abraham, rebuilt on this sacred spot of the tabernacle of clouds, the Kaaba, or the sacred temple of national worship. Each year, the true followers of the faith would make a pilgrimage to Mecca to worship at the national shrine. Because of the presence of a lawless element in the city of Mecca, many of these pilgrims were robbed, beaten and even murdered. Therefore, in the year of AD 647, Muhammad organized a group of fearless men as an inquisition or vigilance committee whose main objects were to protect the weak, dispense justice and punish the criminals. Oh, please. Oh, 
What, what, it's like wishful thinking on steroids, that is. That's not historically accurate. Oh, he was a tyrant. <clears throat> he committed genocide. The order was firmly established in 1698 and since then has become one of the most highly favoured secret organisations in the world. Because of the ruthless manner which the group used to accomplish its aims, its leaders had to be careful in their selection of new members. Therefore, severe tests and strong obligations were required of each candidate. You see? You have just passed through those tests and are now a noble of the mystic shrine. Today, the order is often referred to as the playhouse of masonry. The Shriners, like I said, are considered the jesters, the clowns. They just want to have a good time and party and help sick children in hospitals. But I assure you that there is a serious side to all our activities. The events or acts of our initiation, which, which to you may have seemed a bit of horseplay, were given to either impress you with the ritual or teach you a lesson that will prove beneficial in later life. Oh my goodness, you guys. How long have I been talking and showing you this? There's more things I need to show you. <clears throat> I will put the link in the description, okay? So now I'm thinking, we've seen the connection between Mecca, Shrine, Kaaba, and the Freemasons. We've seen the logo, the emblem, being at the top of the pinnacle of this Freemasonic compass the triangle thing and now i've got to ask who is the illuminated being you guys who is it they say they use the name allah for generic purposes right they've got to use a god why did they not why did they pick another god why did they not pick buddha why allah i propose to you because that is lucifer you remember my last video friends i showed you the connection between baal and mystery babylon how Baal worship is happening today and it's surrounding the region of Mecca. Islam is Baal worship. Can you see this, you guys? Are you able to see this? So we've got two sides of the same coin seemingly working towards one common goal. Number one, to either set themselves up as a god to be enlightened or number two, to elevate another deity. Baphomet and Allah. <sighs> Many people who come out of this cult thing have said that the head that is behind the curtains or in their rituals is the figure of Baphomet. But I just showed you the connection between Baphomet, the Knights Templars and Allah, Muhammad, Mahomet. Oh, you guys, I don't know. This is going to make for a really long video. There's a lot more to talk about regarding this. A lot more that I want to talk to you about now. What did I have over here? There was something I had here. He goes back to these objects. I showed these to you in my last video regarding Mystery Babylon and Baal, the connection between Baal. This here is Baal worship. Freemasons, Shriners are all involved in Baal worship. It doesn't matter what they tell us they're doing. Now we need the Holy Spirit's discernment to discover what's really behind the facade, what's behind this mask. They can masquerade by using different analogies, dress code, but this is what's really behind it. Now the reason why... <laughs> Let me come back. So up close to the screen. The reason why I'm going to have to continue with this message, you guys, is because there's so much more to talk about. There's tons of stuff I have there I haven't even shown you yet, and it's going to be two hours if I show that to you now. So, what I'll do, I'll continue this with part two, and including in that message, I'll mention to you regarding the riches, the money, the wealth of Mystery Babylon, and how it is influencing the West. You know, you've heard of this saying, follow the money. 
well we're going to do that in the, in the next part to this and um, this is all I see this Freemasonic Shriner thing all working towards future Mystery Babylon this mingling of deities but taking this oath and swearing allegiance to Allah Muhammad Kaaba Mecca the Freemasonic side allegedly worship Lucifer the enlightened one right the great architect but there's also the Baphomet connection and I've shown you that where that leads I will be back and I will speak to you soon what do you think about that you guys so far please share your comments in the description in the comment section down below please share my videos I really appreciate that if you could do that one thing for me if you could share my videos and get these messages out increase the awareness that there is this other side to this Illuminati Freemasonic thing that we're not told about and it's there it's right there it's been recorded in history it's right there there's a reason why it's not talked about so please pray for me pray for my protection my courage my boldness my discernment and um, I will be back soon and right after this I'm going to continue preparing notes for the next um, video thank you so much Thank you.